So up next for the Divas Championship, funny story here, because the Divas made their entrance, because by this point in the show, I really had to pee. And I, I didn't want to go during the Adam Rose and Bunny match, because I had a feeling that I would miss the revealing, or the unveiling of who was in the Bunny costume. So, um, I didn't go then, and, I, and obviously uh, that was a, a mistake, so I probably should have, because they did nothing with the Adam Rose and Bunny shit, and I knew that match was not going to last long. So I figured the match, the Divas match, is probably going to go maybe five or ten minutes, so I'll go, just go, I mean, I saw the entrances, and I left, and I came back, and it was commercial, so I'm thinking, okay, they, they go to commercial before the match or whatever, and they were on commentary, and I guess the match, the match happened, it started and ended in the time that I was gone, going to the bathroom for all of 60 seconds. It was crazy. So I come back and I ask you guys on Twitter what happened. And uh, apparently, AJ Lee got kissed by Brie Bella at ringside. Nikki Bella capitalized on that, hit the rack attack for the 1-2-3 New Divas Champion. The match lasted all of maybe 15 seconds. Kind of, you know, uh, a reminisc reminiscent of the Daniel Bryan and Sheamus thing from WrestleMania 28 when AJ Lee distracted Daniel Bryan, the fiancé, or the husband, I guess I should say, of uh, Brie Bella and uh, cost him the World Heavyweight Championship against Sheamus at that event two and a half years ago. So why they kind of drew it back to that, I really don't really have much of an idea, but uh, it was interesting, though. I saw a lot of people jump to conclusions saying, oh, why did they bury AJ Lee? She's out of her, she's out on her way out of the company. This is it. Goodbye, AJ. Thank you, AJ. Uh, a complete burial of AJ. I didn't really see it as that at all. If anything, I saw it as time constraints. Because, uh, like I said before, the main event the, the main event of the evening, the 5-on-5 the, the five five traditional tag team match between Team Cena and Team Authority, that went almost the full hour. They didn't go off the air until 10.59. I cannot remember the last time that was the case. And I know they can go overtime on the network, but they're still airing on pay-per-view, and I know you can't go past 11 o'clock on pay-per-view. So um, they had to go off on time. So... They probably knew, I mean, I guess they found out that, I read a report that they found out that the match would be as short as it was, only mere minutes before they went out, and I'm sure AJ Lee, being as vocal as she is, was probably not happy about that. But still, though, I really did not have a problem with this, especially if they continue the feud, and they did do it the next time on Raw, um, the, the feud is being furthered going to TLC. I don't know if we see a triple threat match with Nikki, Brie, and AJ at the next pay-per-view, or, because a lot of people have been asking if Brie is, you know, full-on heel, because we predicted that last week on WrestleRant Radio, specifically RJ, we pointed out the possibility that Brie could turn on uh, AJ here and reunite with her sister. Now, that looks like what could have happened, and that's still the route they could take. She was all smiles after the match, and on Raw, uh, also on Monday's Raw, but, um... What I'm thinking is that they're probably going to have Brie, because the 30-day suspension thing or the, the thing as, as her assistant wraps up either today or tomorrow or something like that, sometime this week. You know, realistically speaking, I think it would wrap up today on Tuesday the 25th, because by that point it would be 30 days. Sunday was 28th, even though they were saying that was day 29. I'm not really sure. But um, still, though, what I'm thinking is that Brie is going to get on Nikki's good side, completely fool her by acting like she's her best friend turn on her, go back to being a babyface at some point within the near future, and then, you know, do that feud um, over the Davis Championship, going into the Royal Rumble, or whatever. Um, I don't think they'll rush into Brie versus Nikki at TLC. I mean, I really don't care for the feud. I think it's better off now than it was a couple months ago when they were doing the, the Jerry Springer shit. Like, that was god-awful. And it's still not great now, but at least it's better. And I think Nikki Bella... And I really don't have any problem with her being Divas Champion, if only because... She has worked tremendously hard over the last year and a half to get better, as has Brie, but I think the full package, no pun intended, has to go to Nikki Bella in that she has great mic skills, she's really honed her character as a heel, she has uh, definitely improved her in-ring game, so I personally really have no problem with Nikki Bella winning the championship here. She is the focal point of the Divas division. And say what you will about Nikki, but AJ Lee is really the one without a character. She's attacking faces, she's attacking heels, she's leaving her partner hanging high and dry on the apron. Um, Emma, a couple of weeks ago, if you remember that, so she's kind of a tweener character, and I mean, she'll, she'll always have her fan base, she'll always be over, but uh, it's just really hard to connect with the AJ character and feel bad for her or feel sympathetic towards her character if she's being bullied by the Bellas, if she also comes off as unlikable, so it really makes no sense, so... Like I said before, I really have no problem with Nikki Bella being the new Divas champion. I look forward to seeing where they go with the new Bella storyline, the new twist on it. Um, with Brie potentially being healed, we'll find out for sure in a couple more weeks. I still think it's a ruse, we'll find out. But um, I look forward to, where, to seeing where that goes going to TLC in a couple weeks.